Finding the Volume of a Volcano, Lesson 13.2c. Sam made a clay model of a volcano in the shape of a cone. His model has a diameter of 12 inches and a height of 10 inches. Find the volume of clay in Sam's model to the nearest tenth. Use 3.14 for pi. So here's Sam's clay model of his volcano. We were told that the diameter was 12 inches and that the height was 10 inches. And we need to find the volume to the nearest tenth and use 3.14 for pi, not the pi symbol on a calculator, 3.14. Now since we're given the diameter and not the radius, we're going to use the formula V is equal to one-third pi multiplied by the diameter divided by 2 squared times the height. We're going to use 3.14 for pi. We know the diameter is 12, so we have 12 divided by 2 squared, and the height is 10. We can simplify this. 12 divided by 2 is 6. We know we have 6 squared. We can do 6 times 6 to get 36. Now we have 10 times 36, which is 360. We can multiply that to 3.14 and get 1130.4. We don't need that trailing zero, do we? We can just say it's four tenths, not 40 hundredths. Now it's telling us we need to multiply this by one third, which is the same as dividing by three because multiplication and division are inverses. They undo each other. So we could do 1130 and four tenths divided by three. We can do long division, or we could use a calculator, but I like doing the long division. We see how many times 3 will fit into 1,130 and 4 tenths, and I found it was 376 and 8 tenths. Now it told us to round it to the nearest tenth. Well, it is at the nearest tenth. The volume of the clay is about 376 and 8 tenths cubic inches. So just remember, when we know the area of the base already, then we can just use volume is equal to one-third base times height. When we don't know the base area, we can use volume is equal to one-third pi r squared h for the radius squared times the height. If we're only given the diameter and not the radius, then we can multiply pi and the height by the diameter divided by two squared. Let's try another one. A volcano has a base diameter of about 8 kilometers and a height of about 2 kilometers. What is the volume of this volcano to the nearest 10 cubic kilometers? We have our formula with d divided by 2 squared because we were given the diameter. That's our r squared. We need to figure out what r is, the radius. That means we're going to have 8 divided by 2 squared, which means we're going to have 4 squared. Our height is 2, we've got that for the height, and we're going to use 3.14, 4 times 4 is 16, that means we have 16 times 2, which is 32, we do 32 times 3.14 and get 148 hundredths, then we need to multiply that by one third, or divide it by 3, and we get 33 and 49 hundredths as our volume. Now, it told us what is the volume of this volcano to the nearest 10 cubic kilometers as the instructions. So we need to go to the nearest 10, which would be 30 kilometers cubed. The volume is about 30 cubic kilometers to the nearest 10. Now, be careful of large numbers. We can estimate an answer before we actually solve the problem to roughly know the answer. If our actual answer is very different from our estimate, well, now we need to recheck our math. So let's try doing an estimate, and then we'll actually do it. So we're seeing that our volcano has a radius of 5 miles and a height of 3. So we can use the formula with radius squared in it, because we know the radius. We know it's 5, that's going to be 5 squared, that's going to be 25. And we can multiply it by the height, 3, to get 75. And 75 times 3 is 225. 
Now we need to multiply 225 by 1 third, or we could do 225 divided by 3, and we get 75. So if you notice, for the estimate, I didn't use 3.14, I just used 3 to go quickly with no decimals. And I think the volume is about 75 miles cubed. Now when we actually do it, we're going to use 3.14 for pi, so we're still approximating. We've got our radius of 5, which is going to give us a 25. We can multiply it by the height 3 and get a 75. When we multiply 75 times 3.14, we get 235 and 5 tenths. When we just multiplied it by 3 for pi to estimate, we got 225. So this is a little more accurate, even though it's still an approximation. We need to multiply it by 1 third or divide it by 3, same thing, and we get 78 and 5 tenths miles cubed. So it's very close, 75, 78.5. Our answer is close to our estimate, so our answer is reasonable. Now, what if we had done the actual, and it said that the actual answer was 98? We'd say, wow, that's really far from 75. We must have done something wrong. And these numbers are not that large. I just used these numbers and as an example, but... If you are dealing with very large numbers in tens or hundreds of thousands, try estimating your answer before you actually solve it to be able to compare your actual answer to see if you're close and it's reasonable. Now I want to show you how to find a missing height. In fact, I have two ways to do this. This is the first way. Let's say we know the radius is 5 centimeters and it tells us that the volume is 225 cubic centimeters but we don't know the height. We can write it the way we've been doing. And instead of putting V here, we know it's 225. We have 225 is equal to 1 third pi r squared h. We know this is 5 centimeters. We can use 3.14 for pi. So we have 1 third 3.14 times 5 squared times h, whatever h is. Well, we know 5 squared is 25. We multiply 25 times 3.14 and get 78 and 5 tenths. And see how the h is just following along? Now we can multiply the 78 and 5 tenths by 1 third or do 78 and 5 tenths divided by 3. And I got 26.1666 and some other numbers. So I rounded it to 26.17 since these are approximations anyway. And our h drops down. We're going to divide both sides by this coefficient, 26.17, to isolate this h to one side of the approximation symbol. And 225 divided by 26.17 is about 8.6. We know the height is about 8.6 centimeters because that's what it was given in centimeters. Okay, now here's the second way that we can solve this. We know that the volume was 225. We know we're going to use 3.14 for pi. We know that 5 centimeters was the radius. We have 5 squared, and we're trying to find the height. So we could also have converted the 3.14 to a fraction as 314 hundredths, then reduced it by dividing this by 2 and this by 2, and we would have gotten 157 fiftieths. Now, we have this for our equation, and we can cancel out the greatest common factor, 25. There's one 25 here, and there's two 25s in this denominator. That'll give us 157 over 2. Now we have 225 is approximately one third multiplied by 157 divided by 2, h. We can multiply these two together. They're both fractions. 1 times 157 is 157, and 3 times 2 is 6. We have 157 sixths. And when we do the math, the division, we get the 26.166 and so on, which rounds to 26.17. We can divide both sides by the 26.17, same numerator and denominator, that's going to give us 1h on this side, and when we divide 225 by 26.17, we get about 8.6 centimeters. Same answer as we got before, 
doing it the other way. So just remember, there could be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than the other. I found the first way easier. We're finished with lesson 13.2, and we're moving on to 13.3a, modeling the volume of a sphere. So now we're going to be talking about the volume of spheres. As always, have a wonderful day, and join me for 13.3. Bye.